ACC for you. The third highest request in the poll came for Pondicherry University MSc entrance examination. And we are going to do some of the previous question from that today. So the first question here is from the part of uh, hybridization and shapes. That is something we have uh, came across in all kinds of question papers. So I3 minus iron is. So what we should do first. Uh, iodine is having 7 electrons. 7 electrons plus 1 from the negative charge. So total of 8 electrons would be there. Then out of this 8 electron. 2 are used for bonding. Each with the, both of the iodine. And remaining we have 1. All are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So we are having 2 bond pair plus 3 lone pair which corresponds to linear which corresponds to linear shape. So option B linear would be the answer for I3 minus I. Now the second question here is the spin only magnetic moment value for COF6 3 minus is. So what you have to do first the COF6 uh, 3 minus means uh, state the oxidation state of cobalt will be CO plus 3. Now cobalt is D7 S2 having 3 D7 4 S2. So CO plus 3 would be D6. Now we will be filling in the D6 to find the number of unpaired electrons. Now we are having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So the total number of unpaired electrons n will be equal to 4. Now the formula is root of n into n plus 2. Substituting that we will be having root of 4 into 4 plus 2 which is 6. Which is equal to root 24. So uh, the nearest perfect square would be I have already told you. Without even without substituting this we can directly write how if the number of unpaired electron n is equal to uh, 4 then the magnetic moment value would be approximately equal to 5. If n is equal to 3 the magnetic moment value would be approximately equal to 4. I have already made a video on this. I uh, will be giving the link in the description box below. So according to that assumption what should we have the value it should be approximately equal to 5. Even by calculation also we got that the value should be approximately equal to 5. So out of these four options the value A is the one which is approximately equal to 5 that is 4.89 Bohr magnetron. So that itself would be the answer that we are looking for. Now the third question here is propose a suitable reagent system for the conversion of 3 hexane to E3 hexane. So what is E? EZ nomenclature is uh, used in place of uh, the cis trans, uh, cis trans itself. So uh, E means the group should be in the highest priority group should be in the opposite side that is it is analogous to uh, z, uh, the trans trans isomers so uh, sorry trans compounds that therefore what we have to do here we need to find the reagent which gives a trans product or trans product uh, according to that e product let's see this should give us this product i have already told this is lindlas catalyst and this would be giving cis or z products then h2 palladium carbon this is definitely not our answer because this will be not converting to alkene but it will be converting it into an alkene mostly now nabh4 and nacl2 cannot convert cannot convert the alkyne into uh, an alkene definitely so the answer should be finally uh, Na sodium and liquid ammonia. I have already told the sodium liquid ammonia would be converting the alkyne to trans alkene or we can also say E alkene. So that therefore our answer would be option D. Now here we have the question for a reduction that is we have to identify the major product in the following reaction. This is a typical example for this particular reagent which is S binap been uh, RuCl3. This reagent is an organophosphorus uh, compound. It is used for multiple reduction. Here we are looking for an alkene reduction. We are having two double bonds here and we have to understand which one would be uh, giving the best okay which one would be giving us the uh, best reduction or which of the alkene should undergo the reduction. So this is very selective and whenever we have an allylic alcohol allylic alcohol alcohol 
the allylic double bond will be getting reduced so let's see here we are having two different double bond definitely this one is the allylic double bond and out of the option only option d this is the fourth option d only option d is the one where a reduction of the allylic double bond occurs so that itself would be our answer this is a typical example and uh, if you want more about this reagent uh, even the next uh, the r isomer of this reagent is also having st certain stereo specific and even selective reductions and this reduces not just alkenes but but this is used as a reagent for the reduction of a multiple number of compounds. We will be seeing that later on. Um, but right now you have to remember that if there is possibility of an allylic uh, alcohol reduction, uh, allylic double bond reduction in the alcohol, then uh, let's uh, we will be always looking at that only for the reduction of uh, reduction by this particular compound. Now we'll go to the next question. Uh, fifth question is which among the following is a super acid so what is actually is a super acid a super acid is a substance which will be having acidity greater than 100 percent than the acidity of 100 percentage pure sulfuric acid so definitely the uh, h2so4 won't be the answer hcl also won't be the answer and ch3co2 also won't be the answer so option d h2f sbf6 which is also known as so uh, here fluoroantimonic acid is the uh, super acid this is a typical example of a super acid most of the times you can expect this question even for other entrance exams also now the sixth question is a very important thing which is the john Tell john teller distortion john teller distortion is a geometric distortion where a non linear molecular system will be undergoing a distortion to reduce the symmetry and energy uh, there are different uh, different types of in low spin and in high spin complexes for different uh, electronic configurations it can happen that is the distortion can happen or cannot happen so i will be taking a detailed class on this in the coming days but before that uh, you have to remember that in case of a very symmetrical configuration most of the times this does not occur if symmetrical configuration is there then john teller distortion will not occur so let's see if there is a symmetrical configuration here t2g eg0 not a symmetrical configuration t2g3 eg1 is not a symmetrical uh, configuration but t2g3 eg2 is definitely a symmetrical configuration so that one will not be showing the uh, this one will not show the gentle distortion especially since this is a high spin complex we can see both the the t, t2g t2g level and the eg level both are half filled so this is a highly symmetrical uh, symmetrical system and therefore this will not undergo gentle distortion and in the coming one in the next videos i'll be taking one uh, the classes to understand which all configurations in the high spin and low spin will undergo gentle distortion and which will not undergo gentle distortion this is very important for hyderabad central university also they have asked multiple questions from this gentle distortion part so let's see that in the coming class now the seventh question in Downs process the sodium is extracted from so Downs process uses uh, the particular cell known as down cell for the extraction of sodium and is done from NaCl sodium is extracted from NaCl now next how many isoprene units are present in alpha pinene? so answer is option b2 so what you have to remember is that terpenes can be divided into a number of things that according to the number of isoprene units in it so if there are so terpenes can be divided into a number of types according to the number of isoprene units in it. if it is having one isoprene unit then it will be known as hermiterpenes and the example is prinol then if there are two isoprene units then it is known as monoterpenes and the examples are pinene and geraniol then sesquiterpenes will be having three isoprene units and the example is varnisol then fourth diterpenes with four isoprene units the example will be retinol retinal etc please remember this because these are the typical examples and usually geraniol and alpha pinene farnesol etc are very 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 much asked repeated repeated question these are so remember that 
So the next question is uh, the which of the following statement is correcting correct regarding C2 and N2 minus here there is a minus so we cannot see also it is N2 minus so C2 is having total of 12 electrons and N2 is a, N2 minus is having a total of 15 electrons even simply by looking at these numbers itself you can suggest that uh, N2 minus will be paramagnetic and C2 will be uh, diamagnetic but if you don't want to take risk we will be simply writing down the configuration and seeing that. So for C2 it will be sigma 1s2, sigma star 1s2, sigma 2s2, sigma star 2s2. Next comes pi 2p x2 and pi 2p y2. So this is 2. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 and 12. So this is so we can see all the electrons are paired. So definitely C2 is diamagnetic. Up then I have already taken the filling of, about the filling of the orbitals in uh, according to molecular orbital theory. We please watch that if you have not yet watched it. Now in case of N2 minus sigma 1s2 it will be sigma star 1s2, sigma 2s2, sigma star 2s2. Above 14 actually sigma 2pz should be coming first but we can write it either way here because uh, sigma 2px2, pi 2px2, pi 2py2 then sigma 2p z2 and we have pi star 2p x1 let's count it 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 and 15 so we can see one electron is unpaired here so it will be paramagnetic so c2 is diamagnetic and n2 minus is paramagnetic option d will be the right answer now we will be going to the next question uh, UFX, UF6 is used in nuclear fuel processing and it is uh, produced from. So UF6 is uh, uh, the used in the nuclear reprocessing and in that case it is produced by using uranium and ClF3. And the reaction goes like this. U plus 2 ClF3 gives UF6 plus you have 6 plus Cl2. So this is the equation and therefore option C would be the right answer. Next, the hybridization in XeF4 is. So what is the formula of finding the hybridization? First we have to V plus M minus C plus A. So here there is, uh, so V is the number of valence electrons of the central atom. M is the number of mono uh, valent groups attached to it. C is the charge of the cation. A is the charge of the anion. Here there is neither cation nor anion. And therefore let us simply write this. Valence electron of xenon would be 8. Plus number of monovalent. F is a monovalent and your 4 number of F is there. So it will be equal to 6. So according to the table that we have already discussed. If we are having the value as 6. Our um, hybridization would be sp3d2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So sp3d2 option C would be our answer. Now the final question here is the Haber process is used in the manufacture of. This is a very simple question because Haber process is the manufacture of ammonia from hydrogen and nitrogen, hydrogen and nitrogen using what is the catalyst? Iron catalyst, iron catalyst at a high temperature and pressure. So that is Haber process and you should remember the name. So in Pondicherry University, you can see a trend of asking the, the certain names of the processes or cells or systems and ask you uh, what is produced in that or what is manufactured in that. The manufacturing of the uh, industrial manufacturing units, uh, that is the names of the processes are usually asked. So please remember that. So please, uh, today the second video will be of JNU that we are going to upload. Please keep watching our space for more videos. I will be doing video about the Jantala distortion and also mathematical problems and organic chemistry questions of HCU also in the coming days. But next video will be of AMU because we have not yet started that series. Definitely it will be of AMU practice questions. So please like the video, subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for latest notification. Thank you so much for watching. Prepare well and work hard. You will be all getting good scores if you do that. Thank you so much.